All right, in this video, we're going to start talking about partial fractions. And partial fractions is one of those things that has a lot of cases to it and is pretty long. So definitely not going to do this in one video. So in the first part, we're just going to talk about the basic idea of it and the partial fraction decompositions. Um, in another video, we'll talk about actually figuring out some coefficients, and then lastly, we'll put it all together and actually do some problems. So, again, a pretty long procedure. So, partial fractions, what partial fractions is for is, again, it's integrating. And what you're integrating are rational functions. And rational functions, again, are polynomials over polynomials. So x squared plus 4x divided by, let's say, x cubed plus 8 minus, let's make it 8x, minus 3. Suppose we had to integrate that thing. This would be a problem that we could do using partial fractions. Suppose we had to integrate x plus 1 over, let's say, x squared plus 4x plus 4. This again is a rational function, so this is a problem that we could do using partial fractions. Um, you could just have a single number on top, 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 4. Again, that's still what's considered to be a rational function, so you could still use partial fractions on that problem. One thing that you have to make sure of is the degree of the numerator has to be strictly smaller than the degree of the denominator. Okay, if not, you're going to have to do long division of polynomials. Okay, so for example, suppose you're integrating x cubed plus 4x and then on the bottom we simply had x plus 1. The first thing you would have to do on this problem is long division, x cubed plus 4x, and divide that by x plus 1 to turn it into a better form. Okay, and I'll probably do one of these all the way out on another video. Um, I'm not going to talk about long division of polynomials right now. If you need to see long division of polynomials again, you can, hey, visit my website. Um, there's some examples um, under the algebra section about long division of polynomials. So you may want to take a look at that. Again, I know this is one of those things that by the time people end up doing partial fractions, they've kind of forgotten it a little bit. So definitely feel free to, to, to take a look at that. So again, you'd have to do long division on this one first. Again, the highest power on top is 3. The highest power on the bottom is a 1. Well, definitely the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator. If it's greater than or equal to, then you have to do long division. Okay, so suppose instead we had something like this, x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. Well, this is a problem where we're in business because the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denomina denominator and we could start doing our partial fractions technique. Okay, So there's four cases. Let's talk about the cases here. I'm going to stop writing the integral, but suppose in all of the things I write down, this is what you had to integrate. So this is going to be case one if you have what's called distinct linear factors. Okay. And the reason why partial fractions works, we only are going to have these four cases, is because it turns out that any polynomial, no matter what power it is, can always be factored as a product of linear factors and quadratic factors. So that's a result from kind of higher up algebra. Pretty neat little thing. Um, you know, maybe not something you would think would be initially true, but. Um, well, hey, it is true. So, so distinct linear factors. So we're going to start talking about our partial fraction decompositions right now. So suppose on top I simply had x, and on the bottom I had x plus 3 
x minus 2. Okay, so notice on the bottom I have distinct linear factors. I have an x plus 3 factor and I have an x minus 2 factor. The partial fraction decomposition works this way. Each factor gets its own, it becomes the denominator of a fraction. And if it's linear, you just put a generic number, we'll call it a on top. And then we do the same thing with our x minus 2 factor. And we just put a number b on top. Okay. The goal is eventually is we're going to have to figure out what numbers a and b are. So the idea is, you know, suppose you had numbers on the right hand side, 1 and 2. Well, we could get common denominators, the common denominator being x plus 3, x minus 2. And the idea is when we get common denominators, cancel out, you know, simplify the numerator, we want to get x back. So typically we get common denominators and write it as a single fraction. But for partial fractions, you're going the opposite way. You're taking um, a fraction that's sort of already been combined and we're decomposing it into its separate parts. So that's the idea. Okay, so distinct linear factors. Let's do another example here, um, just of the decompositions. So again, suppose I have just a single number 1, and suppose I have x minus 2, 2x plus 3, and let's just say a single x. These are all linear factors. Okay. Well, again, you would break this up. Each little linear factor gets its own fraction. a over x minus 2 plus b over 2x plus 3, and then plus c over x. Okay. And again, our goal is going to be to figure out what values a, b, and c would be so that when we did get common denominators, simplified it down, I would just get my number 1 back. Again, we'll talk about this in a separate video. Okay, so suppose next, case 2 is when you have um, only linear factors, but some are repeated. Okay, so suppose suppose my thing that I have to integrate, my rational function, looks like this. 3x plus 1, and suppose on the bottom you have x plus 1 cubed times x. Okay, so notice I've got a linear factor, x plus 1, but it's being raised to the third power. So you could argue, well, this isn't really a linear factor, but, you know, obviously the whole denominator is not a linear factor, um, or it's not a linear polynomial, but again, the idea is when you have it factored, you have linear factors. So x plus 1 is linear. What you do is you kind of, you know, I think about it as building up to it. So I'm going to have a fraction with an x plus 1 to the first power. Then you just keep bumping it up, the power on it then I'm going to have an x plus 1 quantity squared. Well, I need to build it up until I get an x plus 1 cubed. Okay, if this had been x plus 1 to the 30th power, so 30, I would have x plus 1 to the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, all the way up to 30. Okay. So I finally got up to my x plus 1 to the third power. And then you just take care of the other linear factors in the same way. Well, I've only got an x to the first. I'm only going to need an x. And just like before, when you have linear factors, you take one degree less, which in this case is just going to be in constant, a, b, c, and d. And again, our goal would be to figure out A, B, C, and D. Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to turn a tricky integration problem into a bunch of things that are a little more straightforward. And notice you could integrate all of these things on the right. 
the first three, once we had numbers, you could simply do a u substitution, x plus 1, and then the last one would involve the natural logarithm function. So that's going to be the trick. Let's do one more like this. Suppose you had 1 over x squared minus 4 times x minus 2. Okay, so if you look at this, you may think, well, this is not linear factors anymore, but again, this is where you're going to have to be careful. In the other examples, they were already given to you in factored form. You can actually factor x squared minus 4 as x minus 2, x plus 2. Well, that now means I have a linear factor that's repeated. So we can rewrite this as simply 1 over x minus 2 quantity squared, x plus 2. So you have to be a little careful. You have to always ask yourself with partial fractions. Um, one, this trick about the numerator being smaller degree than the denominator. And the other thing is, is the denominator completely factored already? If not, you're going to have to factor it because otherwise things aren't going to quite work out. Okay, so but the same trick, I've got an x minus 2 squared, so I'm going to have to build up to it. I've got an x minus 2 to the first power and then I've got an x minus 2 to the second power and then I'm going to do my x plus 2 so I've now taken care of the denominator and again I just take one degree less on top I put an a on top a b on top and a c on top okay and that would be the partial fraction decomposition for this thing on the left Again, we're not going to talk about figuring out the A, B, and C value in this video. Um, there'll be one right after this where we'll do this. Okay, So that takes care of linear factors. Let's talk about quadratic factors. And the idea is really exactly, almost exactly the same. So suppose we have our third case here. Distinct quadratic factors. Again, quadratic meaning powers of 2. So suppose my partial fractions, or my rational function that I have to integrate is x plus 1. Suppose I have x squared plus 4. And then suppose I have x squared plus, let's see, I want to make something that doesn't factor. So let me just make it x squared plus 9. Um, x squared plus 4 does not factor. Likewise, x squared plus 9 does not factor. So in our last example, um, we had something that looked quadratic but actually factored into linear terms. This time we don't have that. You do the same idea though as in case 1. Each quadratic factor gets its own term, its own fraction. And then I put my x squared plus 9 over here as well. Well, before we just put a single number on top, but now what you're going to do is you're going to take something one degree less than a quadratic um, factor, which in that case would be a linear factor. So a general kind of generic linear factor, you could write that as ax plus b. So if you have powers of 2, you're going to have x's and numbers on top. And then we'll call the other one, say, cx plus d. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be a little more tedious because now we have to figure out A, B, C, and D. Okay, so same idea though. Each quadratic factor gets its own fraction, and you just kind of put this generic stuff on top. So last but not least is case 4, where you have quadratic factors. some repeated and then I'll do one big example kind of mixing everything up just to show you how it all gets combined so suppose again I had x plus 1 on top suppose now I had x squared plus 4 to the third power and then maybe x squared plus 9 again so just like before when it's a third power, you're going to have to kind of build up to it. So I'll have an x squared plus 4 
to the first power. I'll have an x squared plus 4 to the second power. I'll have an x squared plus 4 to the third power. And I'm running out of room here. Let me try to let me try to squeeze it in here. Then I'm going to have an x squared plus 9 to the first power because all I had was one of those anyway. And again, the same thing. You basically just put these generic linear factors on top. So I'll have an ax plus b, a cx plus d, an ex plus f, gx plus h. And you could use a sub 1s, a sub 2s, whatever, um, you know, as long as you just recognize that, hey, these are just numbers. Okay? So the same idea as when it was, dis excuse me, linear factors that were repeated. You kind of had to build up to it. We're using that same idea here for our um, quadratic factors when they are repeated as well. So let's do one more partial fraction decomposition. Um, when we have a bunch of stuff in here, let me try to squeeze it all in here. So suppose my partial fractions... Um, the rational function I have to integrate is x plus 4 over, let's suppose it was x squared, x plus 1, and then let's suppose I have an x squared plus 3 to the fourth power. Okay, so I'm going to put all this underneath of it because otherwise I think I'm going to run out of room again. So again, the thing I recognize first off is everything is factored. You can't break x down. You can't break x plus 1 down any further. Likewise, x squared plus 3 um, will not factor. Okay, so the first thing I notice is I've got this quadratic factor that's repeated. So I'm going to build up to it. I'll put an x to the first and then an x squared term. That'll build up to the x squared term. And then I'm going to have an x plus 1 term next. That'll take care of my x plus 1 factor. And then I'm going to have to build up to this x squared plus 3 to the fourth power term. Alright, well here we go. x squared plus 3. Then I'm going to have x squared plus 3 quantity squared. Then I'm going to have an x squared plus 3 quantity cubed. And then lastly I'll have an x squared plus 3 to the fourth power. Okay, so as you can see it's pretty long here. I'm running out of room. I can't even squeeze it all in on one screen. But the same idea, when it's quadratic, so the factors being quadratic, you just put, when it's linear, you just put an A on top. I'll put a B on top. I've got my X plus 1. Again, that's a linear factor. I'll just put a number C on top. And then all of the, my remaining factors turn into irreducible quadratic factors. So that's where I'll add the, the x's and the numbers. So um, a, b, c, d, x plus e, let's see, f, x plus g, h, x plus i, j, x plus k. Okay, and again, in all of these problems, what you're going to have to figure out is the stuff on top. The A, the B, the C, the D, um, the E, the F, the G, the H, the I, the J, the K. And that can be pretty tedious. So um, we'll talk about this in another video. Um, it's basically the method of equating coefficients. There's also little tricks that you can use to, um, to help you figure out these numbers when you have linear factors only or I even not only if there's just any linear factors in there as well so definitely feel free to to check out my other videos at justmathtutoring.com um, we'll do these tricks of actually figuring out the coefficients the a the b the c the d etc um, and then after that well once we have those what the heck do you actually do we'll talk about putting it all together